In this video, we're doing the build along challenge. My name's Kyle. My name's Dad. We're all gonna react to the knife that Dad made because we thought it'd be more entertaining. This is a part of the build along knife challenge. If you guys wanna compete and win tons of cool stuff, then feel free to make a knife like this and submit a photo by the 27th. Once all photos have been submitted, all the judges will pick the winners. Also, one of the prizes you can win is our beginner bladesmith online course. So if you wanna have a good time and possibly win free stuff, then check out the link in the description. All right, I got given a sketch and Josh said, make it. And I'm, it seems like something's missing here. Oh, that's right. I didn't forge it, it's stock removal. I haven't done this for a long time. Hey, no, no stock removal shaming here. No, nope, it's a little weird, but I, I'm gonna stick with the print. Well, you didn't have enough time to do this knife. No, it was supposed to be a, a, a quick build along. So I just, I kept going back to simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. I think it took you around, what, three days to make it? Yeah, three days with all the videography and I did a little maintenance here and there too on stuff that tore out in the shop. So if you weren't videoing it, how long would it take? Uh, three days. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm getting ready to heat treat. So I got a really wore out uh, 320 belt here, 120, 320 belt. And it takes all those uh, stress risers off. It softens the edges and reduces the chances of cracking, which the 1084 is pretty durable anyway. But anyway, it's just good practice. Soften all the edges. I heat treat at 1550 and Celsius. Uh, I heated my uh, Parks 50 oil up. I heated it up to like uh, 110, 115. Hey, there's me, Kyle. That's me. Hello. That second one's you. We're like, big boys are coming through. We're getting ready to video some courses. There it is after heat treat. That always looks pretty cool. Does it come in black? You can get any color you want as long as it's black. Uh, I think we're going to temper this, I don't know, around 420, <laughs> 425. Okay, if you guys didn't see that, so dad didn't video himself putting the blade in to be tempered. He just videoed himself to take the blade out after temper. And so I took that clip and I reversed it and it looks like he put it in and then took it out. It's a little funny. <laughs> like insta temper. <laughs> insta temper, yeah. Right here, I think you're scribing some lines. After you're done scribing the lines, you uh, look at your lines, make sure they're still there. Yep, they're still there. Are they in the right place? <laughs> Move the height gauge over, put the height gauge back to zero, <laughs> move it over some more. <laughs> now you uh, make sure the line's still there. Yep, still there. I was thinking. <laughs> now we're just now we're just thinking about lunch. I'm gathering That's what my you're doing. thoughts. You're just thinking about lunch now, aren't you? And after staring at that for, I don't know, a while, you're like, yep, let's go eat some lunch. <laughs> no, I didn't. And now you're like, hey, look, camera, lines. This surface grinder attachment is amazing. You can make it do tapers for tapered tangs instead of just being parallel all the time. It is so nice to have. Deadly accurate, as long as you got fresh belts on it. It's got some kind of like a sign bar set up on it so you can just use some spacers up at the first bar and then when you wanna double the amount of taper when you flip the knife over, you just move to the second bar with those same spacers and it's perfectly the same amount of uh, doubling the taper. So here, here Dad's trying to take the blade off those magnets and he needs to clean it because he wants to flip it around. Turns out it's not clean enough because he tries to put it back on. So he tries to use his thumbnail. Oh, oh, fingers. Oh, there's some burrs on there. Oh, I'll try to get some of those burrs into my thumb. I feel my sharp blood system. metal going into my thumb watching this. Uh, Getting my daily dose of iron right now. I got a pretty tough hide. Now I haven't, I haven't surfaced ground the tang up there on the front of the magnet. Could you run into the magnet with the, the belt if you went all the way down? That is correct. And now dad's just using some acetone. <laughs> acetone? <laughs> or Windex. Or it could be bleach. Or gasoline. <laughs> you guys don't know, dad likes grabbing random Windex bottles, emptying them and putting random things in them. And sometimes he'll label them. The important ones are labeled. <laughs> but unimportant ones you just smell to figure out what's in them. Well, it's not thrown in flames, so we know it's not the acetone. That's quite a taper. Yeah, it's great. I love it. How thick is that on the end? Uh, around 20 thousandths. That's cool. Yeah. You know, I've always had something I wanted to do, but never had the guts to do it. Make a taper so thin that it actually tapers out before it's at the end of the handle and then the rest of the handle is just wood. Uh, I think I'm putting some plunge lines on there. 
I don't really understand what's going on here. You're getting ready to do your plunge guns, and then right before you touch it on the blade, you're like, oh, wait, I, I don't want to do this. And then you go over to the other grinder. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't grind my blade yet. <laughs> oh, it's like I guess you decided there's some more grinding to do before yeah, that plunge. We try to skip steps. Yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be a one day deal, so I figured if I skipped a bunch of stuff, I can get it done one day. That is funny that you're at the finish grinding like attachment there, but then you're over here at this thing just hogging off more yeah, material. Thirty six grit. That's doing a brass rod test. Can you explain that a little bit? The brass rod test is really nice because you can kind of tell if your heat treat was uh, proper or not. Especially with a knife like this, you can run the knife over the brass rod and you should be able to barely see the edge flex over it. If the edge stays bent over or flexed, then your knife's probably a little too soft. Or if the edge chips out, then this knife was probably a little too hard. Dad was using the slack belt to give the edge a convex, so it's not flat ground all the way to the edge. There's a little bit of convex there that just gives the knife a little extra strength, little meat behind it, but yet giving it a refined, thin edge at the same time. I'm sharpening the knife on the Broadback Sharpener. I'm starting at uh, two, 240 grit, I think. I went to 400, uh, 800 grit, 1200 grit, and went to a leather uh, stroping with a pink rouge on it. So it's a polished edge. Dad, I don't know about this. It looks like you're about ready to give yourself a cramp. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that angle. Gotta get the shot. And this is how you make a perfectly elegant knife look like a shank made in prison. <laughs> the grip is gonna be unbeatable though. Look at that. I think this knife is intended to be a competition cutter <laughs> and uh, dad's seeing how quickly it'll chop through a two by four now. Yeah, I got, I got tired. I had to quit. I don't know, it was a couple thousand strokes in. I didn't get through. I got wore out before the knife did. The two by four is pretty hard on the edge. So it's good to just bang on it for a while and see if it chips the edge or rolls it over or anything kind of similar to the brass rod. I am tempering back the tang to make it more um, stronger, flexible, springier, and not so brittle at the Ricasso area. And then here, Dad got with Windex. He called Windex. He's like, hey, I want to do a brand deal with you guys. Windex's like, hey, what do you got in mind? Dad's like, I'll take a shot. I'll make everything out of focus except for your brand. <laughs> it's going to sell millions. <laughs> Give me a brand deal. Come on. getting ready to put Pharaoh's name etched deep into the steel. And how do you do that? Uh, take this wet stuff and hook up these electrical things and turn it on and bzz, and there it is. It's, it's elfin magic. <laughs> DC current and electrolytes. Gatorade or you use Powerade? <laughs> I took a brass black and etched in there a little bit with some brass black and then sanded it. See how the name stands out? Make sure I got nice and even and deep. Now we're uh, back at the world's loudest tool. I'm going to turn the volume up and this is what the thing actually sounds like. And warning, you might want to turn down your volume. Yeah, it's loud. It's even louder than the ginormous five horse angle grinder turning at thousands of RPM. Kyle bought a decibel reader because he plays loud guitar and he wants to know if he was going to destroy his ears or not. We took it to that machine and apparently 
you can listen to that loud noise for about six seconds before you get damage or something. <laughs> Irreversible hearing loss. Also, if you don't know, that cutter is for woodworking and it's absolutely amazing. Grizzly has some for like $35. If you have a milling machine, I highly recommend one because you can flatten stuff real quickly. you're getting ready to do glue up and with this you're showing hey guys look how good it looks after i dremel tool and then you put tape on it and you're like now look how cool it looks with the <laughs> tape on there look how pretty that is it's so shiny that's getting a huge thing of a five minute epoxy you shine put it in the cup and you know it's good epoxy when you can't squirt it out with your hands and you have to use <laughs> pliers oh no mind you that has a brand new one right no. there just sitting there but he's like no i refuse i'm using this old nasty stuff and then dad no. look it's five minute epoxy dad proceeds to spend about five minutes trying to get it out of the stinking thing <laughs> it's set up before it gets stirred and then once he finally gets it out he's like hey guys look at this look that's how that should look right <laughs> that looks normal i'm pretty sure it's not supposed to look like that yeah it's different looking So yeah, you put all the epoxy on and you're like, wait a second, that doesn't feel right. Something feels a bit off with this. I think I might've gone messed up. I, I ran out of five So minutes. you scrape it all off. <laughs> Take it and off. then you grab the brand new one that was sitting there all along. You're like, hey, let's give this one a shot. But just to clarify, you normally don't use five minute epoxy, correct? Negative, never, <laughs> uh, maybe once. Now that epoxy looks much normaler. That's, that's yeah. That's more of a normal color. I expect it to look like a, like white frosting. And it didn't have a 12 grit in it either, like quarter inch size rocks. We always use West System uh, epoxy. And I never use it. But you just use five minute epoxy because you intended this to be a quickie knife. Yep. Why'd you put the clamps on there? To hold the, uh, the scales on with the epoxy. Yeah, but you put the epoxy on, you took the clamps off, you profiled the yeah, handle, wait, then yeah. you put clamps on it again. Now, what was going on there? I don't know, go back. I, got, <laughs> I have no idea. So watch that What'd again. you do, man? <laughs> Cause it looked profiled. There. Like once you profile the handles, you realize the epoxy wasn't set up and you're like, oh shoot, I gotta put that. <laughs> I gotta put these clamps put back, on. back on. <laughs> I'm putting some lines on here, some reference lines to grind to for the profile, the side, little, a little bit of palm swell. Dad, you're adding CA glue to the handle because you probably found a little hole or whatever. So you want to fill it up and then you want to speed it up. So you grab your accelerant and then you uh, probably gonna spray on it. Nope, you're gonna unscrew it. And that's <laughs> that's the wrong end. <laughs> that's the wrong end. You do realize you're supposed it to spray. Unexpected. Use the other end. It's like a, a like a Q-tip dopper. You can dob it on there at the dobber end. You're gonna plug up the end of it with some super glue when you touch it on there. Well, there's like two inches there. I can cut some off. As a side note, Dad, have you noticed how good that stuff smells? Why does the I accelerant know. smell so amazing? It does. It smells like something you would wanna like, I don't know, spray all over you. But I think it's got acetone and nasty stuff in it.
That's a pretty good shot. That was a good shot. Everything's in focus. Love that. Looks like the buffer's running really slow. No, like 10 RPMs. But it's not. It's going pretty fast. 1750. Real quick, LearnKnifeMaking.com is having its biggest sale of the year coming up on Black Friday. All of our online knife making courses will be 50% off. So if you want to learn the skills you need to make better knives, then check out LearnKnifeMaking.com this Black Friday. I got the handle where I want it. I got it all wrapped up. It's got the uh, Carnuba wax buffed on it. Uh, I did Carnuba wax on the blade uh, before I wrapped it, so it's protected. And I'm running through the sequence of uh, belts on the broadback sharpener, which made really short work of uh, sharpening this bad boy. My first 220 grit. Why don't you go get the knife like Kyle hold it for the first time? And Kyle hold it. He's never seen it, right? Yeah, he's never seen it. You've never seen it, have you? No, I haven't seen it finished. Oh, it's definitely bigger than it looks in the video. Oh yeah, that tapered tang is really nice. That's probably the best part of the whole knife right there. Copy that. Love a tapered tang. Yeah. That wood is really, really blingy. It's got some cool colors going on. Definitely gonna look good in the thumbnail. Yep. The 220 grit finish looks really good on there. It's really nice that it's got Argentium silver domed pins. There's probably not very many knives in the world kind of at this price point that have silver pins holding the handle scales <laughs> together. I think it's something really cool though, and it's something uh, more people could probably do because the Arginium silver is not very expensive at all for little pins on a handle like this. And the Arginium silver is easy to work with because you can get it pretty soft and dome it and works really well for little domed pins. I will see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye. Major sales starting Black Friday, all courses 50% off.